Back in the days when movie humor was smarter and more elegant than the gross-out comedies currently in vogue, director Preston Sturges, who was born 100 years ago this week, set the standard for film farce. His big break came in 1939, when he offered to sell an original screenplay to Paramount Studios for $1 for the chance to direct his own film. And the rest, in this week's Encore, is Hollywood history. They came back and said, well, a dollar's not right. We'll give you $10. And he accepted, took the deal, and directed his first film and won an Academy Award. It was the first time you'll ever see a credit written and directed by. The film was The Great McGinty. So just to help you remember. <laughs> it's the story of a bum who works his way up through a crooked organization to become governor of the state of New York. You asked for it. And she says, you and who else? And I says, oh, yeah? And she says, yeah, is right. So I says, you and me both. She says, that goes double for me. I says, oh, yeah? Preston Sturgis had a run in this town, though it was short. It was as bright and brilliant as any filmmaking run in history, I think. In five blazing years, from 1940 to 1944, Sturges wrote and directed eight of the funniest, most ironic films ever made. I assure you facts. This is terribly important. I wish I could be down there myself. The Miracle of Morgan's Creek is a hilarious wartime tale of an innocent girl who ends up with sextuplets and can't remember any of the circumstances. Get a map of the state. Make sure that Morgan's Creek is in it. If it ain't, maybe we could persuade him to move over or something. Oh, boy. I had always heard it was riotously funny. And that was true. But I was really unprepared for the parts that caught at my heart. I can tell you what dress you wore almost at the first Fourth of July party, and you weren't hardly any bigger than the firecrackers. Then you remember the church lawn party when you sat in the apple butter and they blamed me for it? Sullivan's Travels is a film that a lot of people see as my father's most autobiographical work. You see the symbolism of it? Capital and labor destroy each other. It teaches a lesson, a moral lesson. It has social significance. Who wants to see that kind of stuff? There is an element of seriousness and drama that he was able to put in to a, a comedy that was unlike anything any other filmmaker was able to do. Joel McRae and Veronica Lake travel through the underbelly of American poverty. And in the midst of this very funny film, there is that seven and a half minutes. Not a word is spoken, not a laugh is had. It's just this beautiful poignancy of, of what life was like in America at that time. I think one of the most interesting things about his pictures is if you look at the, the roles that he gives to women. And sex didn't even enter into it. Oh, but of course it did, darling. I don't think he'd have given it to me if I had a hair like Excelsior and little short legs like an alligator. Sex always has something to do with it, dear. I see. From the time you're about so big and wondering why your girlfriend's fathers are getting so arch all of a sudden. Nothing wrong, just an overture to the opera that's coming. The woman in his films is frequently the center around which all the action spins. In 1941, The Lady Eve was voted the number one film by the New York Times, ahead of Citizen Kane. Oh, you just can't stand it anymore. You're leaving. These women don't give you a moment's peace, do they? Well, go ahead. Go sulk in your cabin. Go soak your head and see if I care. I saw Sturgis fall into the Hollywood trap. What have you done for me lately? They discounted the 11 hits in a row and killed them for two bad ones. Last month, the American Film Institute listed the 100 greatest movies of all time. Not one of Preston Sturgis films was named. This led Steven Spielberg to say that he would gladly trade two of his four films on the list if they would include Sturgis' Sullivan's Travels. Unfortunately, they declined. The last scene in Sullivan's Travels is probably one of my favorite scenes of all that he wrote because it is so human and in essence in one line he captures what his life is all about and why he made the pictures that he made. There's a lot to be said for making people laugh. Did you know that's all some people have? It isn't much, but it's better than nothing in this cockeyed caravan. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> he may not have made the AFI's film list, but this week Preston Sturges was honored by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. That's all for this week.